welcome to the Tuesday, September 2nd, 2014 meeting of the Lake Forest City Council. Could I ask the clerk to call the roll, please? Certainly. Honorable Mayor Schoenheider. Here. Alderman Waldeck. Here. Alderman Feidler. Here. Alderman Moore. Here. Alderman Pandelion. Here. Alderman Tack is absent. Alderman Reisenberg. Here. Alderman Edelman. Here. Alderman Moreno. Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Betty, very much. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. First item on the agenda tonight reports to city officers. Comments by mayor is the first item. I have one uh, board and commission appointment. Uh, Barry Hollinsworth will is asked to be appointed to a uh, term on the Elwa Farm Commission from Ward 2. Uh, I need a motion to approve that appointment, please. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a resolution of appreciation for Robert Raymond, and I'll read this, uh, if I may. And before I start, I would tell you that uh, Bob's dad actually worked for the city, Bert, uh, for over 25 years in the water and sewer department. Uh, so the family combined has had over 50 great years of service to our community. So uh, we're very proud of that, and he should be as well. Uh, whereas Robert Raymond has been a dedicated employee of the city of Lake Forest since November 28, 1983, as a refuse collector maintenance worker, too, in the public works department, streets and sanitation section. And whereas Robert Raymond served as a route captain since May 1, 1996, and functioned as the assistant supervisor since March 10, 2008. And whereas Robert Raymond was instrumental in enhancing the recycling program since its inception in 1991 to include the recent rollout of recycling carts. And whereas Robert Raymond contributed to the overall design and reorganization of refuse, recycling, and yard waste collection methods within the sanitation section and the drop-off program at the compost recycling center, adding efficiency and providing better service to the residents of Lake Forest. And whereas Robert Raymond was heavily involved in the annual snow program as an assistant in snow operations and by managing the sidewalk plowing program. And whereas Robert Raymond organized and led the sanitation section's participation in Lake Forest Day parades for several years. And whereas Robert Raymond will honorably retire from the city of Lake Forest on September 2nd, 2014. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Lake Forest that the Council, on behalf of the administration and residents of the community, hereby expresses its appreciation and gratitude to Robert Raymond for a public service faithfully performed. And be it further resolved that the City Clerk be and hereby is instructed to deliver a copy of this resolution duly signed by the Mayor to Robert Raymond this second day of September 2014. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution, please? So, so moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Uh, unanimously approved. May I present the resolution to Mr. Raymond? And that concludes my report this evening. Next item on the agenda, comments by City Manager Bob Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Before we get to the published agenda, just two quick notes. Number one, reminder that the September 15th Council meeting is canceled and that our next meeting, which will be October uh, 6th, is going to start at the library. We'll have dinner there, walk the building with the members of the library board, and then come back here. So we'll be back in these chambers <coughs> effectively about 7.30 to start the regular agenda for the city council. Uh, anyone driving around town knows that there are a few dead trees around, uh, mostly ash, uh, that are really popping up as had been predicted by our city forester and, and members of the uh, Parks and Forestry Department. 
So I thought it would be appropriate for Peter Gordon to be here this evening to brief the council on what we're finding, what our experience has been so far, and give us a peek looking forward as to what we can expect uh, over the course of the next uh, year or two uh, with uh, ash trees. So Peter, if I could ask you to please come forward. at the bottom. <coughs> Kathy, you want to jump up there and help him? <laughs> that was me. That was really me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, Bob, quick question on the on the uh, event. Yeah. Do we have, we meet here at six for dinner? No, uh, dinner will be at the library. Dinner at the library, okay. Yep, so dinner will be at the library. We'll be done about 7.15, so you can be back here by 7.30. Okay. Sorry about that. New computer here. Good evening, uh, Mayor Schoenheimer, members of the uh, City Council. Thank you uh, for giving me an opportunity to speak to you tonight about Emerald Ashbor. Unfortunately, this seems like a broken record. I've been here for a number of years consecutively, and unfortunately, the news keeps on getting worse. Uh, but we wanted to share with you uh, the city's program, uh, where we're at today, kind of where we're headed. Uh, we do have some financials in here, and our goal really isn't to talk about the financials as much as it is to talk about the program. And so uh, as we approach our CIP meetings in October and through November and throughout the year, uh, I think it's a better time for us to really kind of look at the financials, uh, break them down, and see where we're headed in the future. So I wanted to start uh, with this simple pie chart, and although uh, it appears to be uh, quite simple in nature, it really is a culmination of two years of data. Uh, you may remember over the last two years, we've come forward and asked you for money for tree inventory. Uh, and as we talked about the Emerald Ash Borer Program, we thought that one of the most important things to help us manage was a tree inventory. And so although you see 7,227 inventory trees, which includes our golf course, our parkways, our cemetery, uh, and some other city facilities, it doesn't necessarily account for all those other ancillary properties that we have throughout the community. Uh, we have certain right-of-ways, certain easements, and so these are trees that are really into what we say come into play uh, along our roadways, uh, and typically they're trees anywhere from six inches and above, so there is kind of a room for error when we talk about these uh, ash trees and other trees in general as far as the population goes. So we basically have broken up uh, emerald ash borer over the years in three separate categories. We talk about EAB treatments, EAB removals, and <coughs> tree replacement. Uh, and so I'd like to continue to follow that kind of philosophy as we move through this. Uh, treatments uh, are going exceptionally well. We're treating about 650 trees a year. You can see by the slide here, we're projected to um, go ahead and treat about $22,000 worth. Uh, and we are involved in municipal partnering with the village of Lincolnshire. Uh, EAB removals, that's really what I think is grabbing a lot of the attention are the amount of dead trees, the green bands. Uh, though that is going well, although I have to be honest with you, the last two years we have lost our low bid contractor, people who have kind of thrown in low bids and realized that maybe they've bitten off a lot more than they can chew. Uh, and so as we go through and talk about a little bit about the financials and the uh, challenges to um, uh, the ash trees, I want you to realize that we're actually basing a lot of this on our middle bidders and not necessarily our low bidders, uh, and that's how we get to some of these numbers. So <coughs> Canuck and Tree Service was our second low bidder, and they're doing an outstanding job, and you can see that we're uh, looking at taking down almost 900 trees contractually and another 600 with the city. Uh, and then lastly, we talk about replacing. Uh, we look to replace about 400 trees a year based on our current budget. You'll see this year is actually a little bit different. Reason being is that you may recall how miserable the spring was, and so nurseries weren't digging their trees, and so we had the foresight to roll over about $65,000 from last year's budget and use it for this year's budget. And so uh, we're actually going to plant about 660 by next spring, uh, and that is right about our threshold that we can actively maintain. 
So we talk about treatment, and uh, I can tell you that this certainly looks like a great commercial ad for treatment. Uh, the tree on the left is treated, the tree on the right is untreated, and that's the realities of this. And so uh, to put it into perspective, uh, this happens to be the corner of Arbor and Wind Ridge, and you may have remembered that we talked about treating Arbor. We thought that was a significant street, uh, one that really added a value to the residents. Well, the side street Wind Ridge is a dead-end street and really doesn't have that same feel. Um, and so again, a treated tree on the left and an untreated tree on the right, literally within 10 yards of each other. And so you can see the efficacy of these products and how well they work. Um, and quite to our satisfaction, uh, I think we've picked out some great trees. I think we've picked out some great trees uh, to save, and I think the residents would appreciate that. Um, overall, we're looking at about $30,000 to treat these trees in perpetuity, uh, which certainly from a single tree standpoint is insignificant. It's $94 per tree, but when you add 650 trees times that, it certainly adds up quickly. Keeping in mind that this is an every two year treatment. And so, um, although we may be at that $22,000 mark this year, next year we'll be a little bit higher just because of the way our rotation's working. <coughs> Removal, uh, as most of you know, uh, is challenging for us. Uh, we uh, base our removals on a per inch uh, category, and so I mentioned that our removal contractor over the last two years, a low bid contractor, has kind of bailed on us. Uh, we've next gone to Kanukin, who has been uh, just outstanding in working with the city, very proactive. Uh, we also try to notify our residents of the removals by putting out these signs, and some of you may have seen these signs not only with our contractual crews, but also with our in-house city staff, just to notify residents, give them a heads up, let them know what's going on, uh, to re-remind them that these trees that are dead are ash trees. Um, because there are uh, other dead trees in town, but we really want to bring kind of uh, this home to residents that although the city's dealing with this, certainly the residents are dealing with this as well. As a matter of fact, we've tagged about 1,700 city trees that need to come down this year. We've tagged almost 150 state trees, which would be Route 43. So for many of you, that's a corridor into Lake Forest. And for many of the, uh, the people in Lake Forest, they actually think those are the responsibility of the city when in fact they're actually the responsibility of the state. Uh, and then unfortunately, we have identified over 3,700 private trees that need to come out because they pose a public health or safety threat. Um, and in your write-up, we talk about the sheer number of trees and the ability to tag those trees. Uh, and it's becoming more and more evident that our staff can't physically tag those trees. And although the inventory was done as we were tagging city <coughs> trees, uh, we feel that we've got kind of a good handle on that. Keeping in mind that these are not trees in backyards, these are not trees in side yards, and so that number we threw out over the years of 100,000 trees is certainly coming to fruition as we move forward with this. We also get into some areas like this natural area off of West Laurel where uh, I talked about the inventory and there being a number of trees in the inventory. When you get into some of these natural areas, uh, not every tree is inventoried for various reasons, easements, and, and so on. Uh, and so that's why sometimes we are not showing an accurate uh, uh, percentage or a number of trees in our inventory because of some of these natural areas. Um, and we don't always replace trees that we take out, and here's a, certainly a good example of why we wouldn't put trees back into an area like this. So as your write-up had indicated, we're putting back about a third of the trees, or 560 trees for every 1,700 we tag. And this is a good example of us probably removing 30 or 40 trees, but not actually putting any trees back in this particular area. For a lot of people, they forget uh, that there's other trees that are dying, and certainly we haven't forgot about that. You'll see in the top slide, that's actually an elm tree that suffered from Dutch elm disease that took us over one year to get down and actually came down last year because ComEd was involved. Uh, the middle tree happens to be a crab apple that died of apple scab or fire blight, and the last tree happened to be a sugar maple that probably was uh, a tree that died as a result of the drought. And so this happens to be on one street, Cherry. For those of you who know Cherry Avenue, it probably has only about 15 trees, or I'm sorry, 15 houses. So this is a pretty significant loss just for this small street. And so the point that I'm making here is that we are certainly doing our best to fight Dutch elm disease, but we're also having to deal with some of those other diseases that are out there. And certainly um, everybody likes to get these trees down as quickly as possible. Uh, for us, our main concern is getting trees that are hazardous down first and then addressing all the other trees as quickly as we can. Dutch elm disease is certainly one of the things that we also focus on because that can certainly take out a lot of heritage trees uh, in the community, whereas for those people who haven't treated their ash trees now, uh, it's probably too late. And so our focus with the elms is to preserve the heritage trees. 
We have, as I mentioned, replaced a lot of trees so far. We've, uh, we're planning on replacing over 500 trees uh, this spring and into fall. Uh, I had showed you a slide earlier of Old Mill Road where we had a line of trees. This is Old Mill Road today. Uh, with over probably 15 trees going back in. Uh, these happen to be a native species um, that's going back in. We're really pushing natives and we're encouraging the community to stay away from trees like maples because we have so many maples in town that we're really trying to diversify. Uh, and this was an area that over time has changed. And so um, as uh, Alderman Edelman knows that there's kind of a swale here, it holds water, and so it gives us really an opportunity to pick the best tree for the sites. Um, because a lot of these trees have been there over a number of years, and as the sites have changed, really the trees haven't. So uh, we look at this as also an opportunity. I talked to you about the budget, um, and um, I know that it's very easy to go ahead and focus on the circled red number on the bottom, and in this case, it's $1.5 million. Uh, we have two options for you, and again, not to get into it, but um, you're looking at about $1.5 to $1.7 million to try to abate this nuisance based on our current data. Uh, which includes some of the financials that we've been able to get for two years uh, regarding uh, removals, our planting, uh, and so forth and so on. So uh, the two options that we have that we'll discuss later uh, in October with you is the budgeted items, which you guys have approved through the CIP, and then we also have an aggressive item. Uh, it allows us to get these trees down quicker, maybe allows us to plant them uh, a little bit quicker. You can see that um, even being in the aggressive item, uh, that plant goes out to FY21. So uh, it's still kind of a long way down the road. So the conclusion basically is, is that uh, we are looking f at almost $1.5 million to $1.7 million over the next couple years to go ahead and take care of the treatment, take care of the removals, and take care of the replanting. Um, it's important to know that uh, through the years, the city's planting budget has been at a low of about $50,000 and has been at a high of about $100,000. This was prior to EAB in town. So this uh, budget really only addresses the emerald ash borer removals and the emerald ash borer replanting. So it doesn't take into account the elm that I showed you. It doesn't take into account the crab apple. Uh, and so certainly adding that to the mix really kind of changes where you might go and the CIP. So not everything is gloom and doom. Uh, I mentioned to you we take this opportunity to really kind of uh, change things and create new paths. Uh, the path that we're creating here is really promoting native tree planting. This is going to be our second fall sale that we've done. You may recall uh, that was one of the pushes by our previous mayor, James Cowie, uh, to really give back to the community what we could do for them. Uh, this has been a successful event for us. We've actually partnered with Lake Forest Open Lands, uh, and we will have our second tree sale this fall, uh, which will be October 18th at the Melody Nature Preserve, which is 350 North Waukegan Road. Um, and we have had great response. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the community can certainly pre-order at the moment. Uh, trees are at the city's wholesale cost uh, with a small regreening fee, so if trees go anywhere from $70 to $200 for three-inch diameter trees. Uh, and and I can assure you that that's probably $1,000 and sometimes $1,500 less than some people may pay retail. So uh, that's why this is gaining steam. It also allows us to put in trees that we think are maybe low in our population uh, and really encourage residents to plant. <clears throat> So obviously here's another plug for the native tree sale, um, but really wanted to open it up to any questions. I apologize for going through the financials kind of fast, but I think that's something that we need to really engage ourselves in to, to really kind of work through it. Questions for Peter? Mike? It's kind of a comment. I am acutely aware of Old Mill Road because it seems like that's where you started last year. And um, they've got those green bags around the trees and I saw the tanker there last week i think watering them is that a new tanker we have uh no it's just uh recycled oh it's pretty cool so um here's a, a thought that i have this summer with my travels to the up i became acutely aware of another tree disease oak wilt and it's all over the northern half of wisconsin and it's kind of headed this way so We've got no choice but to take down the dead trees. I think we have to be very careful with our replanting <clears throat> and think, think it through real carefully about what are the most resilient species we can replant 
did, we're not aware of any kind of potential disease for them yet. It almost seems like there's a new tree disease coming up every year. But, um, and then someday when you have an opportunity to come back here, I'd love to hear you educate us more on the oak wilt and what your take is on when it might be down this way. Sure. Well, I think that's a great point. Uh, for those of you that may or may not know, the city is involved in what we call the Regional Trees Initiative. I represent the city of Lake Forest along with other uh, peers, including the city of Chicago and other park districts uh, and communities across uh, uh, Illinois. Along with, uh, we're working with the United States Forest Service for climate adaptation. Uh, and actually, they are using Lake Forest as kind of a test plot to look at uh, changes in temperatures and what trees might uh, do well here. <clears throat> Uh, we all think naturally about the warm weather coming in. Certainly this winter has kind of maybe changed some of our minds, uh, but it's to a much more global point that we're trying to look. So I, I absolutely agree with you. And we do and are pushing oaks um, as a native tree, but as you and I talked before, oak will is a, certainly a serious threat. I have a question. Um, two questions on the money. As I went over tonight's meeting, there's a more no bids, which I've just <clears throat> been getting mildly upset about over the last period, a few months here. Um, when we lose a low bidder, is there a, I guess it's a question for maybe you, Bob, is there a process? Do we automatically go to the next bid or do we rebid? Well, in the past, we, and you might recall when we did this, we actually awarded multiple bids. So Canukin was also awarded right. a bid at the same time. Generally, what we will do is we'll go to the next one on the list. Uh, because the bidding process itself could take 30 to 45 days before bringing it back. And so we lose a lot of time. Vic and I were just chatting though, is it, um, this is one area that we, I think have experienced this problem more so than any other area of the city. And I think we'll take a look at our bid specs in the future. We mm -hmm. don't wanna make them too hard because we don't wanna eliminate a lot of uh, potential bidders out there. But I think we have to look at what is the cost associated with someone being awarded a low bid and then backing out of the project. I have the other, I, just for the record, I've used Canukin to take out our ash trees and they were unbelievably good at what they did. So I'm not, um, and I've had a low cost guy that wrecked a bunch of trees in my yard. So uh, I'm not talking that much about that. I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in, in uh, uh, the protocols that, that keep good companies good. Yeah. Obviously, we have to let, you know, you, you can't tighten the specs so there's only one guy with a, must possess a 180-foot boom truck that weighs 88,000 pounds or something, then you can't, you know, you got to get a guy from Texas to come up. But right. um, I just want to make sure that we're not slipping into an area where we thought we were going to spend this much money and because of a, 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 a lack of protocol, um, that sounds judgmental. It's not what I mean. Uh, 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 not having something in place to move it to that other price or, or, or look for another low bid person. <clears throat> With this many trees, these can be the frequencies could have caused a, you know, could have a, a, a material effect. Right. So right. Um, that was it. And then the, the not digging because of the wet spring. Does that affect our budgeting on, on the cost of trees? Is, are they going to be a year older and more money next year, or do we get them because we ordered them and they're just going to dig them a year later or well, no, six we, months? Well, no, we we got them. Uh, it just happened outside of last fiscal year, and um, Elizabeth and her group is very strict about when we receive those trees, um, and rightfully so. And so we couldn't receive them until actually the beginning of June because the fields were so wet. So we had tagged them, we had secured the prices. It has nothing to do with that. Keep in mind, all the other landscapers were in the same boat we were. Thanks, sorry about that. Just one tag onto that relative to Canukin. I've been using them for 20 years and I always competitively bid to keep them honest. They're always real competitive and they do great work. So we're very for, and they're a good value. I, I had to take out 20 ash trees and I couldn't believe how reasonable it was. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Peter? I was just curious, uh, in the replacement set, are there any evergreens? And if not, why not? Uh, our evergreens would be selectively placed. Uh, we don't plant them on the parkway because we're concerned about people going in and out by parkways, getting hit by cars, kids like that. We don't like to plant them typically around parks in certain areas because 
people's threat of predators, and so we want to make sure that we place them really in screening situations. Uh, you know, so our limited use of evergreens is typically in landscape plans that may enhance a building, but not so much in our replanting on our parkways. Thank you. Peter, but we do have evergreens available for our plant sale. <laughs> Peter, isn't there some disease that's affecting the pine trees too? Um, you know, there is. And uh, once I retire, I think I'm going to get in the asphalt business because that doesn't change and you can't have as much passion as um, <laughs> trees. But there are evergreens that are being affected. Pines are being affected. Obviously, we talked about oak wilt. So every tree has a problem. It's a matter of if it's lethal or not. Uh, and really maintaining a good tree program for your own personal property. Anything else? Buckthorn. That's the only thing that survives. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just going to point out sort of uh, on the counterpoint to Dave's concerns that, and Bob touched on this, but back when this program was put in place, whenever, a year and a half ago, we were concerned collectively that this was going to be the situation, that the contractors were going to be overwhelmed, that there would be a shortage of capacity, uh, that prices would run up. <clears throat> and that's that's exactly why I think it came from the council that uh, we approved multiple bidders, even though they weren't all the low bidder. Right. We sort of gave everybody an opportunity to put their price on the table, and, and then you've got something to hold them to. So while it may be going up, it probably isn't going up as much as it would have if it was just an open situation where we had to rush out into the market and find a new contractor. So uh, that that does put some some controls on, on how the market uh, adjusts prices. So I'm glad we did that, I guess that's my. Good move. That completes my report. Thank you, Peter, very much. Thanks, Peter. Next item on the agenda, comments by council members. Kathy? Yeah, I have one. Um, just wanted to make everyone aware of a significant Public Works Committee meeting that's going to be coming up next week. Uh, next Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. at Municipal Services, uh, the Public Works uh, Committee is going to be reviewing results from Strand, which is our consultant, um, and they'll be reviewing uh, with us their RFP regarding the new membrane modules and the retrofit of the water plant. Um, in addition, um, we'll hear a presentation from Aquasource. Um, as you probably recall, our, Aquasource is our current supplier. They're flying someone over um, from France to present to us um, regarding their proposal to modify um, our modules, um, our, our plant with their new modules. Uh, so given this um, rather significant presentation, we're asking um, all the aldermen, um, the city council, um, to, to go ahead and we'd be pleased if you would join us. Uh, you can um, ask some questions and view the presentation. So for those of you who can make it, 6 p.m next Wednesday the 10th. Thank you. Uh, next item under comments by council members, uh, Property and Public Lands Committee, consideration of a recommendation from the Property and Public Lands Committee in support of a resolution authorizing and directing activities related to advancing the redevelopment of the city's former municipal services site located on the northwest corner of Laurel and Western Avenues, mm. presented by Alderman Reisenberg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> the beginning uh, well, the municipal services um, development was initially looked at in 2007, and then with the advent of the Great uh, Recession was kind of postponed, and the PPL, the, which is the acronym for Property and Public Lands, um, began to dust off the, uh, the development in December of uh, last year. <clears throat> we started with a request uh, for qualifications, uh, where we had ele um, 11 submissions from various developers. We narrowed that down to five that we interviewed, which led to three developers being selected uh, for the property, um, whereupon we asked for a request for a proposal. Uh, two out of the three uh, submitted those developers uh, were interviewed, and as a result, uh, the PPL unanimously selected the focus group as a preferred development team. Based primarily, I think, on their impressive vision uh, for the site, 
and also their professional, uh, professional team. Uh, next steps, uh, there are really two that we want to discuss with council this evening. The first is uh, it's time for city staff, the city's attorney, and our consultant to negotiate the final purchase and sales agreement, which will be eventually brought back to council for approval. And we also want to initiate a public process for a tax increment financing district, or a TIF, which will be used for uh, property cleanup, building a demolition, demolition and other TIF uh, eligible uh, expenses. So what I think we would like to do right now, Kathy, there's, I know you've prepared some slides. I think we have uh, the last slide where we talk about what needs to be done, kind of the, uh, the plan for the next say uh, three quarters if you could if you oh well uh, there we go <laughs> you've got a better can you read that you've got a better look at it than i do uh this is just a very high level timeline and uh if the council chooses to approve the resolution this evening then immediately work would be would begin uh, negotiating with focus uh tim anderson uh christine cobb are in the audience with us tonight um, city attorney uh, would begin work with their city attorney to negotiate a purchase and sale agreement. We would also begin to work with our consultant, Lee Brown from Tesca, uh, to take the appropriate actions uh, to move forward the consideration of possible formation of a TIF district. Uh, the fourth quarter of this year, we would anticipate uh, TIF hearings, various notices, meetings uh, occurring. Uh, we would expect that the focus team would proceed with schematic design, uh, do some preliminary work on technical drawings, and we would begin to have some initial public hearings. Uh, the first quarter of 2015, uh, we would see additional public hearings, plan commission, building review board, and then uh, their recommendations would come before the city council. And then uh, in the second quarter of 2015, we would expect to see work begin on the site. Thank you. With that, um, I'd ask the George, do you or Mike uh, have any comments? Nope. George? Just one, one just point of fact that may not be at the top of everybody's mind. This property right now is not on the tax rolls. It is generating zero tax revenue for the city because it's owned by the city. Um, so one significant benefit that it accrues to the city over a long period of time from developing it is that it will actually generate uh, significant tax revenues. Uh, any questions? Council? Any questions of Jack or Kathy? Uh, I'd ask for any uh, public uh, individuals who'd like to make comments or questions. Seeing none, I'd be, uh, bring it back to the council. Uh, if there's no other questions or comments, um, I'd like to ask, ask for a motion to approve a resolution authorizing actions relating to the possible establishment of a tax increment financing district and the sale and redevelopment of the former municipal services site located on the southwest corner of Laurel and Western Avenues. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please, Biddy. Alderman Waltek. Aye. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Pandelion? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Seven yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Betty, very much. I'd like to thank the members of the PPL and certainly Kathy and, uh, and certainly look forward to working with the focus team. Uh, it's an exciting project, something that um, has been long overdue, and we're looking forward to moving ahead with it. So uh, we're excited to, uh, to move the ball forward. So thank you. Next item on the agenda, consideration of a recommendation from the Property and Public Lands Committee in support of an ordinance directing the sale of surplus property, again presented by Alderman Reisenberg. Thank you. Tim, you'll get, the ch you'll get your chance at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. You'll probably have more chances than you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't know exactly. Um, any guesses of the, 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 again, the PPL, the Property and Public Lands, uh, one of our tasks or jobs is to review city-owned uh, property. And we look at it really from two perspectives, uh, strategic uh, properties which are to be retained 
and, sur and surplus properties which generally are sold or in some way disposed of. This evening we want to talk about the acre and a half uh, proposal generally referred to as the triangle uh, proposal, which is kind of adjacent to the former uh, Barra campus. It's underdeveloped land north and east of Sheridan Road, an unused Wesley Road and an unused Wesley Road right of way next to the triangle uh, parcel. Uh, primarily, the property was used as parking uh, for Barra College. <coughs> And then um, when the uh, property was turned over to or uh, Barrow Woods uh, met with the plan commission and was approved, it was generally felt that that triangle parcel was just going to be uh, incorporated into the Barrow Woods uh, development. Unfortunately, that also was a, a casualty of the 0708 beginning of the great, what I referred to before as a great recession. The property, of course, we all know, I think, was, was then uh, purchased and donated to Woodlands Academy. And Woodlands Academy now is uh, proceeding. Uh, they've put their plans before us to, you know, to develop the property, I guess, mainly into uh, sporting uh, type fa facilities and uses. The parcel is still of no viable use to the city. Um, However, it does provide access uh, to the bike path, a parking and open space, and, uh, and but the uh, property is also in somewhat state of disrepair. So the PPL has unanimously decide, decided to offer the sale of the uh, sub, the sale of the property subject to the following conditions. The first is the con conservation easement on the uh, triangle parcel and open space, that the eventual purchaser, number two, uh, would restore the parking lot and maintain the parking lot. And the third consideration uh, or condition is uh, to maintain public, uh, the, uh, there's an easement to maintain public access to the, uh, to the bike path. Once again, this has been unanimously approved um, by the PPL and is coming before you today for uh, council for approval. Again, uh, George, Mike, any um, any additional comments? Uh, the only thing I'll add is it's a pretty innocuous parcel that I think <clears throat> just about everybody in town isn't even aware that the city owns it. Everyone right. would have presumed it was part of Barrett College property and it served no useful purpose to us and like you indicated, does not generate any tax revenue, not that it's going to under new ownership necessarily on mm -hmm. the school, but um, it's just one less piece of property, surplus property for us to have to have and manage on our books. So it makes all the sense in the world. George, any, any no, no further comments. Questions um, from council? Any questions or comment from the public? Seeing none, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve an ordinance directing the city manager to offer surplus property. The triangle parcel, which includes unused right-of-way and is generally located north and east of Sheridan Road, for sale subject to terms and conditions mentioned. May I have a motion to that effect? So moved. I have a second. 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 <laughs> Roll call, please, Biddy. Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Pandelion. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Edelman. Aye. Alderman Moreno. Aye. Seven yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Betty, very much. Any other comments by council this evening? Seeing none, move on to the next item on the agenda, opportunity for citizens to address the council on non-agenda items. Anyone care to address the council this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number five, omnibus, uh, items for omnibus vote consideration. The good news is there's 16. The bad news is there's 16. Uh, so if you'll bear with me, I'll read all 16. As we always do, if there are questions or any member of the council wants to take any of these items separately, they may do so at the end. Item number one, approval of the August 4, 2014 City Council meeting minutes. 
Number two, check register for the period July 26 to August 22, 2014. Number three, approval of the purchase of FY 2015 computer workstations and laptops for all city departments. Number four, approval of policy regarding the Public Safety Employee Benefits Act. Number five, approval to enter into an agreement with Unify for the maintenance of the city's telephone system for a period of one year. Number six, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Zoning Board of Appeals. First reading, if desired by the City Council, final approval. Number seven, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Building Review Board. First reading, if desired by the City Council, final approval. Number eight, approval of a contract between the City of Lake Forest and Inner Security Systems, 418 Treasure Drive, Oswego 60543, for alarm service and monitoring for city buildings. Number nine, authoriz authorization for the city manager to ratify a settlement agreement by the city's risk manager, I I Irma, pertaining to litigation matter 163666. Number 10, consideration of an ordinance amending chapter nine of the city code to regulate illicit discharge and stormwater connections. Number 11, award of a contract with Vermont Systems Inc. to purchase parks and recreation software as budgeted in the FY15 capital plan. Number 12, approval of a water delivery agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers and award of contract for the Sheridan Road Water Main Improvement Project. Number 13, approve the resolution to ratify NSSRA, Northern Suburban <coughs> Special Recreation Association, board action authorizing a petition to circuit court for leave to sell NSSRA property no longer needed for park or special recreation purposes. Number 14, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Plan Commission, waive first reading if desired by the City Council final approval. Number 15, consideration of an ordinance approving an addendum to the Illinois Mutual Aid Alarm Box System Agreement, MABAS. And number 16, consideration of a recommendation from staff to authorize the City Manager to enter into a contract with Elevator Inspection Services Company, Inc. You remember the council to care to take any of those items individually? Sorry. Alderman made one. Um, I forgot about this one. 14. My wife works for Griffith Grant and Lackey. Do I have to recuse myself from 14? Vic? Oh, she's an independent contractor. No, and then she doesn't benefit financially from the outcome of this. No. If, if you want for the record to identify that your vote would only be applicable to items 1 through 13 and 15 and 16, uh, that can be reflected in the record. That's what I'll do. Any other comments by members of the council? Yeah, I've got a, a couple. I've got uh, two questions, and then I wanted to talk about some of the no bid stuff. I've got a question on, on number 13, which is uh, some equipment from Parks and Rec. Is there a process for liquidation that we, do we have a, how do we get rid of the things? <clears throat> if I, can I ask two questions and leave them in? If you, I can, you can absolutely ask two okay. questions. If, if I might uh, take a first crack at that, and then Mary can tell me where I'm wrong. Um, this is not involving city property. Um, the city is part of the NSSRA. And it needs to, under the state statute, petition a court to sell its land. This is a resolution having the city uh, ratify that action since we are one of the members. Okay. It, it's not uh, how we dispose of property. We do have a process for disposing of property, but it's distinct from, <clears throat> excuse me, distinct from this. Okay. And then number, uh, uh, number 16, the contract with the elevator service, there was no per inspection, what are they doing and, and how much is it going to cost and, and is it more than 20000 Is that why you're asking and if so, what is it? Well, I'll let uh, maybe Kathy or Matt uh, come forward, but basically this is a requirement the city has for buildings within the city that have elevators. 
that the owner of the building has to get an annual inspection and we are performing that inspection so that cost is actually just passed on to the property owner but as part of a uh, more comprehensive program that Kathy has been doing with the County of Lake as well as a number of municipalities in this area, we're looking at consolidating or pooling our inspectional services. And this was, I think, their first crack at trying to jointly bid a service to get the price down. But Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're, you're, uh, you're totally correct there. Um, which is what an intern with. should say. We've been with 16 other municipalities, um, including Lake County. And um, Bob is right that we, we don't pay anything. Um, uh, EIS will perform the elevator inspection services, and then the businesses or the owners of the elevators pay that company directly so it's a contract service kind of which which is what it sounded like so why do you have to ask us to enter into it because I was trying to find the threshold thing and I didn't get it uh, we actually enter into the contract and it's uh, let me take it back two steps this is a requirement under the, the uh, state law administered by the state fire marshal they have uh, in turn um, delegated to the municipalities the ability to undertake these inspections so we have to undertake the inspections uh, under our mantle if you will and that's why we're entering into the contract as far as the actual payment though that's what's passed through on to the others so <coughs> it, it's a requirement that it be <coughs> under the our payment totals will be more than 20,000 potentially you need it, it may that... it may be over that and rather than run the risk we'd rather just make sure we have this approved by the council at the end of the day we are the contracting agency but we are not the paying agent yeah, so they're a professional service agent of the city and, and is that the answer to why we we have to approve a, a contract I think Practically, could the city manager do it? Maybe. But I think in light of the fact that they are your agent representing this inspectional services throughout the community, we decided it was good to have it on record that the council formally authorized the professional service contract. And, and, and we also don't know what the precise uh, cost amount. is ultimately going to be. We didn't want to get in the, you know, in the uh, crosshairs of, of having approved it through the city manager and then having more than $20,000 spent, even if we get it back. Okay, so you're putting the monkey on our back. Yeah. Okay, God. And then the and other. It, and it becomes you. Yes, that's right. <laughs> the uh, um, and the number three and number five and number eight were all uh, no bid um, issues again, and and some of them make sense, but some of them don't, especially number three. Um, and while I would agree that's a great price for the computers, just to preface it here. It's also another 20,000 of another thing that you're taking over here. And, and, and I think the bidding process should not be a foregone conclusion, but we should actually go through the process to validate our decisions. And I don't know, I'd like to pull those out and begin voting against things because of the, the lack of effort made in the validation of our quali high quality decision making. Um, if it's, it's certainly up to the council, to, uh, I guess the other um, option is what um, Mr. Filippini said with respect to Mr. Edelman. If you want to make your vote um, uh, detailed, like you just indicated, on three, five, and eight, you can certainly do that, or we can break them out and take them individually. I'd like. I, I, I'm I actually going to countermand Mr. Kiley on that one. Um, <laughs> on an abstention, I'm not troubled by that, but with an omnibus vote, it should either be for the package or not. So we should remove those three. Um, and but I would like to remove them. Does that mean they it, I mean, if, if that's that... the want of the council, there, there is a little more uh, background on number eight that uh, I can provide that may modify your, your uh, perception of that particular item. Um, in particular, uh, this is a uh, both in the packet, you'll find that it's both a settlement agreement and a service agreement. Part of the reason for that is. Um, inner security when the city decided to go with the joint dispatching with uh, the, the village of Glenview uh, asserted that the city had breached a contract with inner security which has maintained its 
uh, dispatching uh, equipment in the public safety building on Deer Path. And they were asserting that by removing it, we were impairing their business to the tune of about $900,000. Um, though we didn't have uh, much confidence in their claim, we thought it best to see if we could resolve the matter rather than uh, fight about it. Um, ultimately, all we're doing is buying the service for two years that we have been using for the last eight years, 10 years, something like that, mm -hmm. and keeping it essentially at the same price and thereby getting a waiver of all claims. So this was not so much a matter of waiving bids as a matter of resolving uh, a potential dispute where they were going to be claiming $900,000 for basically zero plus the cost of service for two years. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a very it's a very small amount. I don't want to be petty or principled to a fault or anything like that. But um, and this one makes sense. Um, so yeah, I, I guess this is number eight. Yeah, yeah that was number eight. And so number three, and three, I mean three, everything's five. got a reason, right? Every 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 no bid situation has a reason. A state contract and. But you know, when we find out what the other bids are, then we can feel good about it, and that process should be followed. And and I don't, I, I don't know, I don't want to halt the process here. I don't. Am I, should I be talking now or waiting sure. for something to happen? Or no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you wanted to say something, Elizabeth. <laughs> I don't know. If... This may or may not affect your feelings, but just um, to clarify, number three and number five. Number three is the purchase of workstations and laptops. The city has standardized on Dell computers. Um, that provides us to an efficiency mechanism. And so uh, the recommended purchase is through a consortium pricing, which is specifically allowable under the city's purchasing policy. However, to ensure that we receive competitive pricing through the consortium, we did look to our other um, providers of Dell through government contract pricing to ensure that the consortium pricing was the, the most advantageous. So we did have a comparison that we did do to verify the consortium pricing. On number Numbers weren't shown. And that's what I mean. It, it's nice to see the matrix. Sure. And what, okay. did, did somebody tell you you've got a really good deal, don't worry about it, or did, or did it come in at $10,000 more? That's kind of more what... Okay. And, and it's, you know, and since I've been on city council, that. it just keeps getting... It's now more excellent reasons for no bids sure. and and bids aren't always appropriate but but so often they can at least be aug the, the good decision can be augmented with validation through the bidding process we could have easily included the other pricing i i agree with that alderman moore by number five that was an rfp process and just to give you some history on the city's phone system um, the city had an evergreen contract. An evergreen contract is one that automatically renews every year. Um, we felt that the pricing was high um, and we weren't particularly satisfied with the service. So we elected to terminate the evergreen contract and go out for RFP. Um, Unify was the only provider that submitted a proposal in response to the RFP. We did have a consultant who specializes in telecommunication services who did outreach to try to look for other proposers and they simply weren't in the local market. So we did make an effort to do that. We were uh, trying to reduce the cost on the, the phone maintenance. So just added information. Did you get any feedback from the consultant about the competitiveness or lack thereof of this bid? Um, it's simply the um, type of technology that we're using on the phone system. Um, they, they did have an outside contractor that Unify used for maintenance for a few years, and when they decided to take that back in, they hired the maintenance folks from that other company. And so that, that company couldn't provide maintenance anymore because they lost their staff to Unify. But I guess my question was, did you get any other feedback about whether this was a competitive price or not? Maybe from the consultant, maybe from people outside the area that you know have similar services that are provided by others. The consultant agrees that it's high. However, it is old technology, and there is limited resources on parts and knowledge to support the, the equipment. And that's where the showing these bids makes more sense, because what what we discover in our business is that when there's only one bidder, 
right. that you've got the wrong spec. You've got a mission critical, no non-competitive situation, somebody who can keep you alive or not alive on the phones, and they're the only ones that can help you. So you've either asked the wrong question, haven't updated enough, or and it leads to the to the next thing. And it, and and because we have to approve this, and we're only given the window that we're given, I don't want to state the obvious and and say and and you're like, you know, you're nodding your head saying, of course I get that, but we don't want to buy a new phone system yet. Well, maybe put you know, put that in here so that I don't have to do this. But it's a, uh, you know, it worries me because there's this. There were four out of four last meeting, I think. There were no bids with all great reasons. Mm -hmm. But eventually, they're all going to be, it, it makes us vulnerable. And I don't mean to preach about it, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, but, but anyway, that's. I absolutely agree. And we do have the um, actual replacement of this phone system in the CIP for next year. So we'll be doing an RFP next for actually replacing the system. So this is likely just a one-year agreement. Perfect. It was with I, th I think the message and I think the message to staff just in general is the more more is better and less is not better. So when it comes to the information in the packets that the council takes a look at, obviously spell it out. You know, spelling you, more? Pardon me? Are you spelling more? Spelling more? More for more, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so and more little graphs too, because us ADD folks have a hard time finding it in a paragraph. <laughs> So, Alderman Moore, do you want to take anything out of oh, the I'm omnibus? Good. I'm good. All right. Then I'd ask for a motion to approve the omnibus, all 16 items. So moved. Second. Uh, uh, roll call vote, please, Biddy. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Pandelion? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye for 15 out of 16. I'm abstaining for 14. Noted. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Seven yeas, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you very, very much. Next item on the agenda, ordinances. There are no ordinances this evening to discuss. Item number seven, new business. Consideration of a recommendation from the Plan Commission in support of the overall landscape and signage plans for the revitalized Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital campus. Presented by Kathy Cerniak, Director of Department of Community Development. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is a recommendation from the Plan Commission. This is the final piece of the design approvals for Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital. Um, I'll, I'll just highlight the work they've done. Um, not only, it, as you know, not only has the Plan Commission uh, been closely involved in this project, but also the City Manager's Hospital Advisory Committee, a group of nine individuals appointed by the City Manager who were specifically selected for their expertise, familiarity with the community, uh, and they've really spent uh, the last year or more working very closely with the hospital team. What's before you tonight uh, are the final design plans uh, for the signage and landscape items aspect of the campus. Uh, just to remind you again uh, of the, uh, the campus area, the, the new hospital will be centrally located on the Lake Forest Hospital campus. The existing campus is in this area. Deer Path is down here. Um, and this is the area of focus uh, for both the advisory committee and the plan commission. Uh, the advisory committee uh, carefully went through an extensive campus signage package. Uh, the uh, hospital team um, spent a lot of time really developing a family of signs, uh, high quality material, uh, moving from larger identification signs at the perimeter of the campus, uh, inward uh, onto the campus, directional signs, informational signs, and then finally very limited building signage. Um, this just gives you a sense of the variety of signs, all based on a consistent theme. Uh, you may have seen a mock-up of signage both along Waukegan Road and along Deer Path a, a few weeks ago. Um, but as the um, road work is being completed on Deer Path and Westmoreland, uh, we will see the new signs begin to uh, be installed. <clears throat> 
Uh, it was important to the advisory committee that the signage be somewhat understated, but really evoke the uh, careful thought and detail that has gone into the whole uh, design development of the hospital campus to date. Uh, second, the hospital advisory committee spent a lot of time also looking at the landscape plan. Um, as the um, as the hospital team heard through the master planning process and through uh, various com community conversations, the perimeters of the campus uh, really were very important. Um, the perimeter of the campus uh, in all areas, uh, both along Route 41, along the Lane Lorraine area, uh, Waukegan Road, and up to the north along Lake Forest Place, uh, a lot of attention was paid to those areas. In those areas, the existing berms will remain. They will be increased in height. Additional berms will be added or landforms. Um, some existing vegetation that is not thriving will be removed. And in all areas, additional vegetation will be added. Uh, the landscaping moves from a more natural uh, form of landscaping at the perimeter of the campus uh, as you move toward the campus, the landscaping becomes more formal. <clears throat> uh, just to give you a, uh, a big picture of the concepts, um, and I know this is difficult to read, but um, the hospital team broke the landscaping into different zones, and as you move toward the hospital campus, again, the landscaping becomes more formal, but the focus of the advisory committee really was less on the, the specific gardens and uh, detailed plantings near the hospital and more along the streetscape and the perimeters of the site. The advisory committee uh, talked in detail um, about specific species, tree species, vegetation species, and you will see there are a number of conditions uh, in the packet in the recommendation you have from the plan commission that would require us to continue to have those discussions as uh, the specific landscape plans are developed. Although this isn't directly a piece of the landscaping, the plan commission specifically recognized uh, the modification that was made uh, to Westmoreland Road as you approach from Waukegan, the road into the campus uh, the connector road, there was concern from Lake Forest Place residents. Initially, this connector road approached much more directly uh, existing Westmoreland Road. Based on input from Lake Forest Place residents, uh, Westmoreland Road has actually been moved away from the uh, cottages, Lake Forest Place cottages in this area, providing additional room for landscaping, berming, and really importantly, directing the headlights um, to the west as opposed to directly uh, toward those residences. Uh, Lake Forest Place residents did send a representative to the plan commission meeting uh, thanking the hospital for being responsive to that issue. Uh, just a quick review. Um, the plan commission first heard an informational presentation on the hospital master plan in September 2011. Uh, the council approved the master plan in October 2012. Uh, work then continued with the advisory committee last January. The city council approved the overall site plan, architectural design, and lighting. Uh, tonight we're before you again with the final two pieces, landscaping signage. Uh, construction on the access points is underway right now, and construction on the overall site is expected to get underway uh, within the next couple weeks. Uh, city engineering staff uh, completed the review of the site and civil plans uh, and uh, just today uh, forwarded some final comments on to the hospital. Uh, hospital still is expecting to serve a first patient about mid-year in 2017. Uh, so the recommendation before you from the plan commission is to approve the resolution in the packet and what that really does is affirm that the landscape plan and uh, the signage plan are consistent with the master plan. Uh, that recommendation comes to you both from the advisory committee and the plan commission with a number of conditions of approval detailed in your packet. I believe uh, um, beginning on page 139 in your packet is this information. I did want to mention one other item as we're just about to see major work occur on the site. 
Um, as with any construction site, things look different at the beginning than they're going to at the end. Um, and so I, I just want to make the council aware and the community aware that um, as work occurs on the hospital campus, you're going to see things that don't necessarily look exactly like the master plan, but some of that is necessary as um, some of the parking areas, existing parking areas are taken out of service as work begins to expand the uh, detention pond and, and begin to create the parking lot. Uh, this area that ultimately will be open space and will be planted will be used for construction staging and for temporary parking. Um, using it in that way really recognizes that uh, the soils here really do need to be replaced. Some of that land's going to be reshaped. Um, so by using that area for the temporary parking, as that temporary parking is removed, it will give us an opportunity to really restore this area appropriately so that as it's planted, it really does thrive. Um, and just to keep in mind, uh, to, to remind people as this construction begins to take place, um, Susan Banks, our communications manager, um, developed this slogan, um, and I, I think that it's important for us to keep it in mind um, as we continue to see that, that site take shape. Um, park here today, back to nature tomorrow. Uh, the hospital's committed to uh, following through with the master plan, but again, just to be aware that between now and then, things are gonna look a little different on the site. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Kathy, and before we open it up to the council for questions, I know Tom McAfee, you're here, uh, you want to come up and make any comments? Tom, who's president of Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital and a frequent visitor to these chambers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, I just really would like to say, because you've heard me a lot, and um, I, um, I don't want to repeat myself, nor I know you don't want me to repeat myself, but I'd like to simply say thank you. Um, thank you for the enormous support that we've had from so many uh, members of our community from um, from you mayor um, to um, the third ward third ward alderman thank you very much both uh, um, uh, mr. Reisenberg and um, and dr. tack I know that this has added some acute stress in in, in your district um, and um, just uh, the guidance and um, and support that you have provided throughout the entire, um, well, geez, it's been nearly four years, I think, since we started the conversation. And I do believe that we have a fantastic plan. Uh, we started with the, with the goal of uh, revitalizing a, a cornerstone of our community that's been in this community for 115 years. I can say with um, confidence that um, this institution will be able to extend its healing mission for hopefully another 100 plus years with this investment. It will be spectacular in every front. Um, not only aesthetically, but from an efficiency standpoint, the technology that it'll afford our technicians and our physicians and nurses um, will allow us to deliver the best of, of medicine and, um, and have it attached to a, a world-class academic medical center um, will allow us to deliver medicine in this community that, um, that virtually any community in the country would, uh, would love to have. Um, it didn't happen um, um, with any one individual, it really did require enormous support from so many members. And I could tell you that when it was suggested that we had, uh, we'd establish a uh, community advisory committee, um, gave us a little chest pain. Um, but um, you know what? It, uh, it was a great idea, and it's played out well. Um, enormous amount of time and effort. Um, Kathy, I know that you've spent uh, more time than, than virtually anybody in, uh, in, uh, in city leadership to help us get to this point, so thank you for your, for your leadership and guidance. And um, I'd just like to say that uh, we're really pleased to be at a point where, um, as you know, last week we, we had our groundbreaking, and in fact, I think that we're close to wrapping up some of the work on Deer Pass, so um, even some of the, the short-term impact will, uh, will hopefully uh, subside shortly. And we look forward to, um, to advancing a spectacular hospital that will serve the healthcare needs needs of, of everybody in this room and our and our neighbors for a long time to come. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, very much. Uh, open it up for questions uh, from the council to either Kathy or Tom. I have a question for Kathy, I think, and don't get up. Well, maybe you have to, I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I've had to uh, take my father to a hospital for some surgery and embarrassingly enough go to the emergency room uh, myself. I'll spare the details. Um, both hospitals are under construction. And 
I took a picture of the hospital my father was at because there were three doors 100 yards apart that said main entrance over them. <laughs> and I had to drive around the hospital in, in Kenosha about three times before I could actually get to the emergency room. I was on the wrong side of a fence three or four times. I just want to make sure that they've got a lot of latitude for proper signage and the, you know the confusion you know with my I had a, I'd cut my hand with a chainsaw and I was holding it driving to get myself to the to the hospital it, it was I was under stress and and you know the three dogs in the car and I mean it it, it, it was a problem and then, and then trying to find the hospital door in Detroit for my father um, with all these main entrances and they said go to the main entrance and 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 I think it's the rambling nature of hospitals under construction in general, and this is different. But with the roads changing, and we're talking about signage, I just hope there's a, 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 as much thought that goes into the temporary shifting signing signage so that people can use the hospital for the next three years, right? It's three years? And, and this certainly isn't the, isn't the end of the city's partnership with the hospital team. In fact, we, we are in communication frequently. Uh, we, we meet at least monthly. Um, their team, um, I think we all have been impressed. Uh, the attention to detail is, is really phenomenal. And, and certainly, as we move through temporary signage and uh, changing things on the campus, we'll make sure that that's an area of focus. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Um, um, I'm sorry, Prue. Yeah, I, I might just make a comment to Kathy. I really appreciate your comments about how things can look differently in that, in that in what, what David very aptly describes as that sort of confusing period when things are being constructed. And you, you, you look and you go, well, that's not what we saw in the plan. I think as important as it is for us to hear that, equally or maybe more important for the community to understand the same thing. And I guess the, the park here today, Back to Nature Tomorrow, is part of that. But I think you can't tell people enough, this is what's going on, this is how to, you know, this is the wayfinding, and, and certainly the caution. We all expect our standards in this community are high, and Lake Forest Hospital has been pretty unfailing in meeting those standards for, for I guess, 115 years. I hadn't realized it was quite that long. I have not actually been using it that long. But I have, uh, <laughs> I, have, uh, I have sampled a number of different aspects of the hospital and have always, uh, always been, been very, very pleased. So, you know, we expect a lot, and you keep delivering, so that's great. But this is going to be a test that will be different. Most of the people who are there now won't have experienced this transition period. And there will be some snafus, and anticipating them is helpful, and letting people know ahead. There will be new ways to get to this or that place. Tell them a lot. Great. We will Great keep work. focused Very on that. exciting. Very exciting. Anything else? It's an opportunity for public to make any comments. Any comments from the public this evening? Seeing none, I'd come back and uh, ask for the council to approve a resolution affirming conformance with the special use permit and master plan and approving the overall landscape and signage plans for the revitalized Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital campus subject to the conditions as recommended by the plan commission as detailed in the resolution. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, unanimously passes. Tom, congratulations. I, I just want to again state that uh, to your comment, I think this was uh, an extraordinary story of collaboration. And where we started and how exciting it was to have those initial conversations and where we are today is really extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So thank you to you and your entire team. I also want to thank the Plan Commission, uh, the Hospital Advisory Commission, and certainly city staff. Uh, it was a great group effort, and we are thrilled to see the project get started. So thank you very much. Uh, additional items for council discussion. Anything council cares to bring up? If not, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.